Hey everybody and welcome to Mike Norman Economics. Now you've heard me talk a lot about welfare for the rich. Those are these programs where the government basically extends all kinds of bonuses and welfare and tax breaks to wealthy people. Today we're going to be talking about the government's EB-5 program, which is basically the visa program that allows wealthy foreigners to come into the United States, put up some money, I think it's about a half a million dollars, and really what sort of contribution are they making to the nation in exchange for this permanent residency? I'm going to be talking today to Brad Barros. He's the co-founder of Atanium Capital Development, and he knows quite a bit about this. Brad, thanks very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. So here's another one of these programs. I call it welfare for the rich. It's like, you know, we're in this whole sort of paradigm now where we want to take welfare away from people who are truly needy. But then we see all these programs where if you're already rich, the government will extend all these kind of programs and special benefits or interest on Treasury securities. When even Warren Buffett said, you know, I don't need the government's money. But here's another one of these examples, isn't it? It is. It is, Mike. The, you know, the, the program initially started with good intentions, like many, thing that com many things that come out of the Beltway. Um, the, uh, the original uh, premise of the program was a million dollars of investment from a foreign person. They had to hire at least 10 Americans in a, in, a, in a targeted area, give them employment, uh, make sure these businesses qualify and continue to qualify as operating so they're actually, you know, hands-on, uh, you know, knee-deep right into the fabric of the local society, building jobs. Then what happened is the program began to change. Um, new, a, a, new, a new piece called Targeted Employment Areas was a, was a, was a, was a, 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 a derivative of the program that allowed for the lower half million dollar number that allowed for, allowed for not necessarily 10 new jobs but the maintenance of 10 jobs and these jobs may be imported into downtown Detroit from guys working in areas that don't have a uh, high unemployment rates or or suffering like a, an inner city may um, and in this program in particular uh, there's been some abuses that uh, that just are, are what kind of abuses are we talking about? Well, I mean, are these guys really putting their money at risk? Is is it something that's going into the creation of new enterprises and new employment? You know, it, 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 you know, often the answer is no. And what's happening is in the in one of the variants of this program, these guys are putting up money for, on a five year basis, basically one percent interest a year, and then they promised it back at the end of five years. There's no economic risk. These aren't entrepreneurial endeavors by foreign people. And yet, you know, these folks are coming in, they're getting a green card, they're getting residency, they're getting the benefits that, that, are, that are part of the fabric of America, but their estates aren't going to be taxed here, their kids may not work here. Um, it's just and how do we know they're not employing family members? We don't have any idea. <laughs> you know, in, in fact, in March of this year, the SEC went after one of these programs in Chicago and, uh, and has a, uh, basically a, an accusation of fraud over about $145 million going into one of these abusive EB-5 programs. So, you know, not to say that they, that they haven't helped society in certain areas, but now, the, the now I know you there. wrote you wrote an article, and, and actually it, it appeared on this blog not uh, too long ago about the the HUD programs, where these wealthy foreigners will come in, they'll put up their half million bucks, but it's going into a government-backed yeah. housing program, so there's virtually no risk whatsoever. Okay, and the people who end up working on these jobs may be construction workers that have already you know already working in the community elsewhere or are employed by contractors or whatever. So it's really a sham. I mean, they're not risking anything. And to most of these wealthy people, the half a million bucks is a tiny, tiny fraction of their net worth, right? That's correct. And there are some, I'm told, that uh, families scrape together the half a million or a million dollars. They come here and they, they help, help build America. But in many of these instances, we're talking about pools of hundreds of millions of dollars of funds in Latin America and in Asia. And, you know, I, my understanding, 10,000 visas were granted uh, in 2011 and 2012. These people are, are coming over, and there, there is no economic risk. In fact, yeah. the reason I learned about EB-5 is I was asked to build an insurance product to help ensure that there would be a return of their money in the fifth year. And as I investigated <laughs> it, I said, there's no risk. I can't. I can't. I can't insure something so, where there's no risk. So, so they came to you and said, "Look, create some structure that guarantees we're going to get our. You know, they're getting 
residency, right. permanent residency, which obviously wasn't enough for them. They wanted a guarantee from you, and you said, hey, no, no reason for us to do it. You're going to be guaranteed your money back anyway. Right, and at that point, it clicked, and I thought, this is just wrong. And I began to investigate <laughs> the program. Seriously. Now, you know, the, for me, this all stems from a fundamental wrong belief, which is that, you know, America now, we're a country of lack. We're needy. We need to attract money from elsewhere because we don't have the means to do this. So these foreigners are coming here, right, with dollars. I mean, where did the dollars come from? They had to come from here to begin with, right? That's right. And, and it's this whole false belief that we're a needy nation and we need to attract these people when, in fact, we have here all the talent and all the resources and all the money, I have to say, to employ our own people, to educate our own people. It's not necessary that we have to, you know, give away the store, so to speak, to have wealthy people come here. And by the way, you know as well as I do, it's not happening just here in America, but it's happening everywhere. In Singapore, Canada's had these programs for a long time. That's right. Britain, right? Yep. I mean, the, 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 the challenge is helping, helping an inner city develop itself by bringing in capital. Well, we have the capital in America if, if we'd be willing to deploy yes. it, if we, if we just changed our worldview about how to better our own country. But, and, and maybe at times, uh, you know, working with, a, with a, a person from another country who's going to come in and employ a group of people um, can be helpful. But in a situation where it, this has been, you know, bastardized, so to speak, and it's now become an abusive program that's lining the pockets of the people who don't need the money anyway at the expense, as an economist, you see it, at the expense of the inner city poor right. in these communities. It, yeah, it's actually you it's know, actually resulting in the opposite of what we're trying to achieve here, right? Right, and, and isn't that, you know, just a, another sad example of what happens when too much goes on in the Beltway? Yeah, and you know, I, I often say uh, a bad belief system is like a disease in the body. If you don't eradicate the bad belief, it kills you. Right. I, I would have to agree with you. So anyway, I'm very happy that you brought this to our attention. Thank you very much for writing that article for the blog. I really appreciate it and uh, hope to see you around again soon. I look forward to it. Thanks a lot. Brad. Thank you. That's it for now, folks. This is Mike Norman. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.